Now we've practiced making functions that can do three main things. One, they work as a black box, which means that they contain and execute multiple lines of code without you having to know what that code is. Two, they can take in data as arguments and work with that data. And three, they can return data, and then their output can be treated just like you would treat any other variable. And the black box is often what makes functions so powerful, because without having to know all the code inside a function, you can employ all its code just by calling the function by name and giving it any parameters that it requires. This is especially useful whenever you want to use functions that someone else has written. Hey, Cezanne. I overheard you talk about black boxes. Look what I've built here. Cool. What does it do? Well, all you need to know is that it takes bread as an input. I happen to have some bread right here. Perfect. OK, I'll try it out. All right, now we just wait to see the result. And there we go. Oh, cool. It makes a sandwich. Yep. All the details about how the black box actually makes the sandwich is not important. All you need to know is that it takes bread as an input. That's kind of like the functions we've been using. We've been using functions like math functions and println without having to know their inner workings. Yeah, but how do you know what input each function needs, like strings for print line function? Well, just like you told me to put bread inside this, um, Java will tell us if functions require certain parameters as input. And this information is actually contained in Java documents, which we'll learn all about next.